see you all. Got a nice fire going here. Hopefully we can keep nice and toasty as we discuss the canonical and theological shape of 2 Samuel. So it turns out that this succession narrative that runs through 2 Samuel and into 1 Kings actually represents a prescriptural level of the tradition. It's a coherent narrative about the succession that we've talked about in previous lectures. And it stands on its own as a very interesting piece of biblical literature, but it does not represent the biblical form of the book of 2 Samuel. As a matter of fact, 2 Samuel in its current theological, holistic, canonical shape ends with a series of chapters, lyrical, um, out of time sequence chapters that form a little appendix ending the book of 2 Samuel and making it a coherent unit about David. In fact, the only book that we have within all of scripture that's about a single ancient Israelite king, setting David's reign up as almost a Camelot experience of sacral kingship, of Zion theology's ideal of a promised son of God on earth, an incarnate son of God on earth. Really, the way that 2 Samuel now ends, and the book of 2 Samuel is created with a focus on David as God's true son, I would argue, and others as well, Brother Childs included, that this is a messianic shaping. It really forwards David as the bearer of the promise of a true son of God coming to earth. Let's take a look at a few of the many features in this inserted final material in 2 Samuel, this lyric material that points in this messianic direction. As Stephen Chapman shows in his theological commentary here, within the appendix at the end of 2 Samuel, the account of the four giants in 2 Samuel 21, 15 to 22, whatever its historical origins may have been, is not in its present theological context, simply an assortment of misplaced doublets about Goliath. We've got David's empowerment by God with vigor continuing on after his prime and re-emphasized as a theme of the book. God's salvation flowing through David is now growing and spreading. Four giants are now killed at the end of 2 Samuel. Remember, these Goliath-like giants are not morally neutral. These are remnants of the ancient Anakim, the descendants of the Nephilim, these forces of evil that stand in opposition to God. God's working in David is pointing forward towards a climactic defeat of the primordial forces opposing God. According to the appendix material, God's light illumines David, and long after David's death, God will keep a light burning in Jerusalem, no matter what. As the Deuteronomistic history continues on beyond 2 Samuel into the books of Kings, God keeps that David light burning, upholding the promises to the Davidic dynasty, waiting for an ideal fulfillment of the Zion covenant promises. At first, it seemed like God's light had been left on specifically for King Josiah, but sadly, it turns out he was not the Messiah. And the light burned on, waiting for God's true Son to make his appearance.